Hi team, so today's video is going to be about good people but to help me explain it I thought I'd get a little guest along. Do you want to come in? Yeah. <laughs> it's Poppy, say hi team. Hi. So we're doing a video about good people. Why do you think we want good people in our businesses? Because if you have bad people in your businesses they might try and steal your money. And if you have good people in your business, is they won't try and steal your money. They'll help you get more money. Don't need me anymore, do we? Why do we like good people? Because if you don't, if you don't like good people, if you like bad people, that's bad. Because you should like good people, because they try and help you. And if people don't have any money, you should give some of yours to them. So there you go, before we get into it, you can check out at this point if you want because you've already had some amazing advice, but we'll get into the video now. Say bye Pops. Bye. Following on from Poppy's analysis of why it's important to have good people in your business, don't really actually know how I'll follow that. It's pretty profound, isn't it? Hopefully she gets it from me, but it's probably a mother in truth. Um, so good people and getting them into your business, I think it's absolutely critical. It's critical for your, your happiness, for your day-to-day -day life. Surround yourself with good people because it's nourishment, it's enriching. It, it gives you what you need out of life because life's difficult. Business is difficult. It ain't that easy. And having good people is everything. And here's why. Number one, trust. Ends. Will your friend, the footballer, be there? Our oh, friend, football friend. Oh, best friends forever and ever. Oh, friend. You can trust good people. Good people trust you and you can trust them. And trust is the foundation of the best relationships and the best business. We all want to be able to be who we are and in an environment where you feel safe, you trust people. It allows you to make liberated decisions. Good people equals trust, equals a liberated mindset. You don't have the same fear, and therefore you make decisions with conviction, and they're supported. They're trusted and they're supported, and people run at those things for you. They wanna help you, they wanna support you, and it's, it's a team, it's a family. And that's the number one reason why I think that it's super important to put people in your business that are good people. Second reason is it allows you to move at speed. Good people follow you on the journey. I've talked about in other videos the difference between building a team to get to break even versus a team to move to profit. All of those things are relevant, but actually at the heart, Recruiting good people allows you and your business to move at a speed that you want to. Because as number one, we've got trust. We've built solid foundations in which we're going to grow from. Trust everything. And all these things come off the back of trust. So we want to go at speed. Because most businesses do. Nobody wants to go at a steady pace. But even if you do, the good people are going to go with you at that pace and they're going to challenge you if they don't think we're going too fast enough or they think we're going too slow but actually it allows you to facilitate the decision making much quicker it allows you to execute your strategies quicker because you're not second guessing everything you do do you need hierarchy you need structures you need processes you need delegated authorities you need sign off procedures in the smallest and the biggest businesses but if you've got good people, all of those things can be slightly soft around the edges. They can be at arm's length because you trust them. They're good people and they are by nature going to do good things the way you would like them to. So that's the number two reason why having good people in your business is super critical. It greases the wheel. It enables you to move at a speed in a direction you want with much less resistance than you can ordinarily experience. Number three, it's fun. Being surrounded by good people is fun. Who else is here today that Coxie! wants- Coxie! Yes! Yes! 
Coxie, easy. Coxie, what are you up to this weekend? Lots of different things. Oh. Anything, you can <laughs> anything you can share with the nation? Um, hopefully after the show I'll be making love. And having a great time at work isn't just getting paid at the end of the month. It makes the world go round and it keeps us ticking and life carries on because of money. But it doesn't make us happy. Fact. Gives us choice, gives us options, gives us freedom, but it doesn't give us happiness. Those things contribute to your happiness. But having good people around you is fun. It gives you the opportunity to come to work and love what you do. Because you can love a product, you could love principles, you could love the building. If I, when I was in stadiums, match days were fantastic. But if you haven't got good people, you will never love the job, the business, or the company. Because all of those things are made by people. People, people, people. I go on about it in all the other videos. How you get profit, how you stop losses, how you increase productivity, how you put development in, it's all people related. Because very, very, very few businesses in this world are single, isolated people. Even if you're a consultant like me, I work with a multitude of partners and companies. People have got to like you, they've got to respond to you, they've got to trust you, they've got to want to spend time in your company. And as leaders, as managers, as people recruiting or being recruited, be good people. Super simple. Treat others how you want to be treated. And if you can encapture that in a workplace, you will go so, so far. And that is why it's on my list, because it's fun. And we all want to enjoy what we do. If we're gonna work, I say this in one of my speeches, particularly when I go into schools or colleges. So how, well, I say to them, how many hours a week are you in college? 25 hours. Right, okay, times that by three, what do you get? Half the time they don't get it, but let's assume they do. 75, right. So 75 hours a week. Could you imagine coming to school for 75 hours a week? No. That's what it feels like if you've got a job you love. You can do 75 hours a week, every week, and not feel like you're going to work. Is it hard? Yes. Do you still get stressed? Yes. But you love it because you're with people you love, you're with people you care about, and you have a fucking good time. And the better time you have, the more profit profitable you will be, the more efficient you will be, the greater the yield will be. And actually, your productivity and your products will benefit as well because those around it are building it in happiness, with love, with joy. And I think it's super important and you can never put too high a price on having fun and happiness in the workplace. Number four, I'm not saying it's a hard one to understand, but this is subconscious. If you surround yourself with good people, you're more likely to acquire good people. But from here on out, we can no longer be friends. And when we talk about things here, we must only discuss uh, work-associated things. And uh, you can consider this my retirement from comedy. And in the future, if I want to say something funny or witty or do an impression, I will no longer ever do any of those things. And that isn't just in recruitment terms. When we're talking about clients, when we're talking about winning business, if you are a good person, you are much more likely to win new business. There's great salespeople and they can focus on the short term and get you a quick book. The great salespeople build relationships. And as I say, that helps you in selling, but it also helps you with retention. It also helps you to retain your staff if you're an employer. You cannot underestimate the value of that because what you're trying to do is retain people, is get people to understand what you as a person, let's talk about this as though you were the leader or you are a manager. If you send one of your team out, if they are a good person, think about this as I'm talking about it. If you think about companies you've got the best relationships with, nine times out of 10, it's not with the top person. 
But if that top person has put in enough energy and enough time to get the right people and create a great culture, you instantly feel much warmer about that. I was making a purchasing decision the other day, something to do with one of the, the, my companies, and the price was exactly the same, the service was the same, the maintenance contract was the same, and the person that came out to see us, I just liked more. Didn't dislike the other person, but I just thought, I bet back at HQ, wherever that is for them, it would be a nice place to work, probably friendly. Decision made, therefore they've won my business. It's super, super easy to miss how important having good people in your business is, not just for the environment it creates, but the reputation and how it enhances it in public perception terms. Because good people make people feel good about your business. So never miss that one, because it's easy to not think about, but actually it's the perception that others take from you, your business, and the decisions you make that a lot of us overlook. Number five, and it's actually what Poppy said at the beginning, didn't brief her, but it's spot on. You just don't really want bad people in your business. They are more likely to steal, they're more likely to not be loyal, they're more likely to do things that make you feel uncomfortable in your own business or in your own teams. Bad people are poison. They are cultural terrorists. The sooner, I've said this so many times, and you probably gathered now I'm unapologetic about it, the moment you've got a bad egg, rip them out of that business. Having good people is having good people. I don't really need to give you the other points because having someone that is a bad person who's going to take shortcuts. And when I say bad, I don't mean evil. No person, to my knowledge, that I've ever encountered, and some of them have been highly incompetent, nobody comes to work to do a bad job. But doing a bad job is very different to being a bad person. Someone that's rude, disrespectful, talks down, makes people feel uncomfortable, is very volatile, makes you feel tiny, that's a bad person. They're the qualities of a bad person. They may be a successful person, but you've got to be able to live with yourself in my view. And so it's not for me to tell you all how to live your life or how to go out and recruit, but I feel like I've done enough in my career to suggest what can be successful. Use it, don't use it, ignore it, up to you. But somebody who picks a bad person over a good person, I would question their morals because if you pick a bad person because you think they're going to get you the outcome you want you're shortchanging yourself you're trying to find the shortcut because that's the only reason you'd ever pick a bad person over a good person if you're trying to find a way to cut some corners and do you know what if you can get away with it great but it only takes one piece of rotten fruit to spoil the rest don't let it happen so that's it for today hopefully another useful one in the surroundings of the, the new office that's not quite finished. But please like, please subscribe, and most of all, please stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.